Now to our second story about who is going to college. Enrollment among young Americans has been declining over the past decade. That decrease mostly driven by fewer young men pursuing degrees. A Pew Research study finds there's about one million fewer young men now enrolled in college as compared to 2011. We took a closer look at why. That's the second part of our focus tonight on Rethinking College. Tomorrow morning in Brentwood, New York, Jordi Velasquez will graduate high school. But like a growing number of young men, college isn't in his immediate plan. I started looking into college a little too late and I couldn't decide on what I wanted to do. I didn't know where I would get the money from. And I just think it'd be better if I started working immediately. Raised by a single mother who also cares for his disabled brother, Velasquez says he plans to become a certified HVAC technician. He hasn't ruled out going to college one day, but says it simply doesn't make sense right now. The fact that I'd have to pay, even though I don't know what I want to do, and that I might not even get a job in the field that I want. He's not alone. Last year, among high school graduates in the U.S., only 57% of men have enrolled in college. That's compared to 65% of women. It's a trend that dates back nearly three decades. Every year since 1996, women have entered college at higher rates than men. The education system as a whole doesn't seem to be working quite as well for boys as it is for girls. Richard Reeves is the author of Of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Male is Struggling, Why it Matters, and What to Do About It. Men are falling behind in education. The education gap is, is bigger now than it was back in 1972 when Title IX passed. What, what accounts for that? The main reason for that is that it's through the education system girls are outperforming boys. So you can see it from the beginning, from kindergarten, all the way through high school. And so if you look at, for example, high school GPA, which is a very good measure of success, take the top 10% of high school students, two thirds of them are girls. That obviously affects what's gonna happen in the college system too. Today, men make up only 42% of undergraduate students. And for young men of color, the gap is especially alarming. There are now 50,000 fewer black men enrolled in college compared to pre-pandemic levels. I think that college is becoming a tough sell for a lot of men, not necessarily because college isn't a compelling idea, but rather because there are so many other competing factors that might be equally, if not more so, desirable. Roderick Carey is an assistant professor at the University of Delaware. He studies how black and Latino adolescent boys experience school. Carey says for the young men he works with, problems often begin long before college. Black and Latino boys grow up in a society that stereotypes them as non-academic, as socially threatening, and many of those types of stereotypes shape how their educators engage with them in schools. More women than men now have college degrees, according to U.S. Census data, and they're more likely to graduate within four years compared to men. It's led some colleges to target male students as a group in need of extra support. We're not pretending the problem doesn't exist. We're trying to address it head on. Jonathan Coppell is president of Montclair State University. How do you craft a, a program that works to help men that doesn't come at the expense of women? Oh, I don't think that this is a matter of either or, and I don't think this is a matter of putting the needs of female students second. I think it's a matter of asking the basic question, why do we see differential graduation rates when we sort by gender and race? And that's where you really start to see this gap widen. More than half of Montclair State students come from underrepresented groups, and men make up just 40 percent of total enrollment. So what are some of the consequences if more young men choose not to go to college? There's so many consequences. I don't think that means everybody should get a four-year degree. I don't think college is for everyone. But if you, if you look at the data, the data says in terms of income, in terms of health, in terms of happiness, in terms of life satisfaction, your odds are better with a four-year degree. In 2022, Montclair State launched what's known as the Male Enrollment and Graduation Alliance, a task force that's now developing programs that aim to recruit and retain more men. So if you're experiencing any level of instability in your life, you are not alone. Danny Jean, the university's assistant provost for special programs, helps lead the initiative. Last spring, he welcomed 300 high schoolers from nearby cities in New Jersey. For many, it was their first time on a college campus. Please give all of them a round of applause. 
For Gene, who grew up in inner city Newark and later earned a Ph.D., it was a chance to share his own story. My family moved over 12 times before I graduated from high school. We were actually homeless at one time and had to move in with family members. I graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA. A teacher that told me I wouldn't be alive to see 25. Alcoholics in my family, drug users in my family. So this work is very personal for me. So what have you found that works? What's, what's the key to providing access and then once students do get admitted, making sure that they're successful? They really need to understand the benefit of college and help them understand exactly what college can offer and be able to map out what their plan is beyond high school. Coming here was tough uh, freshman year. And beyond academic help, Gene says some of the men also need social and emotional support once they arrive on campus. He meets often with a student organization that aims to do just that. Brotherhood has allowed me to be confident. Ikenna Onyebele and Naran Mitchell help lead this group known as the Brotherhood. So it's important that men get support from each other, you know, because we don't get it enough. And everybody bottles in their emotions. You have to keep this persona of, of being a tough guy. Um, and it wasn't until I got here until I figured that that's not the way to go. In the future, I want young men to realize that it's like, it's okay to come out your comfort zone. When you come out your comfort zone, at the end of the day, when you walk in that stage in May, you're going to be grateful for it. Last month, Mitchell did graduate with a degree in family science. Akenna, a business administration major, will do the same later this year. They say beyond the degree, college is already paying off. Professionalism, time management, respect among others, how to work with other people, all of that you can learn in college if you do college the right way. Meantime, back in Brentwood, New York, Jordi Velasquez says he's comfortable with his own decision. I feel like I'm entering a new chapter of my life, and it's, it's always exciting. You know, I've always wondered what it's like to be a grown-up, so uh, now I get to experience it. As colleges around the country try to figure out why so many young men are choosing a different path.